previously on Deborah. Did the music director of Notes Plus Sound just diss the host of the Deborah show? Tell me how you feel. I should oh, oh, oh. It's time to sit down with someone you know. It's time for The Deborah Show, bringing you the stars, the stories, and the performances. So stay tuned for a great show with Deborah. The Deborah Show is brought to you in part by Park South Development for commercial and office space rental and leasing. It's Park South Development, where the tenants are the happiest in town. It's time to sit down with someone you know. I'm Deborah Benton, and I'd like you to join me on my website. Log on to thedeborahshow.com, and you'll get great info. Find out who's next on the show, and you can even get audience tickets from the site. To check out my blog, get my international broadcast schedule, or to order products, log on to thedeborahshow.com. If you'd like to be a guest, or if you just want to share your opinion, visit me online at thedeborahshow.com. Let's keep the party going. So that was the difference between Mississippi and Detroit. I'll say culture shock. Yes, it was quite uh, that, and at the same time, it was a great revelation and a great exodus for my family because we were all going through so much strain in the South, as we all know the South to be. So to escape and get away so that my dad could get a better job, and there are ten of us, and I'm the seventh son of the family. So. Being the youngest, I watched everything, and having six older brothers was always good for me. Okay. You know, especially in Detroit when I had to fight my way to the <laughs> And uh, having a lot of siblings, but it was a great adventure to be able to leave at that age and to be able to make the adjustment from picking cotton to going to schools and having houses that were appropriately attired for human beings to live in as opposed to the the shotgun houses that we were bought up in, that we grew up in. And not that it was bad, life was much better then now that I think about it. And sometimes we get things we don't need because they're in front of us, not knowing that it's a trap and that trap could eventually, when you think about all of my friends and associates, constituents and affiliates, singing friends, when you think back on Marvin Gaye and David Ruff and Eddie Kendricks and Paul Williams when you think back on Jackie Wilson and Sam Cooke. All those were and these are, But they were babies. Elvis yeah. Presley, they were young because they were born in poverty. And when money came to them, they didn't know how to deal with it, so it killed them. Now you, I'm sorry, you went from Detroit straight into the Marines, and you didn't just go into the Marines, you went to Vietnam. Yeah, I went, uh, the first three years was hard training. I didn't know what they were preparing me for. I thought it was fun and recreation. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was going everywhere, man, you know, from Japan, first stop, Tokyo, and Iwakuni, and then Okinawa, and then said, back this to, is the life, huh? Was, hey, you know, I was like getting ready to be general, even though I was a private. <laughs> I felt like this was on, you know, and then suddenly I get orders that say, you know, Southeast Asia, Vietnam, it's like, there's got to be a mistake here. I'm, that's not me. I'm not one of those guys. I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't do that. I just sing. <laughs> this is where I take this rifle and act like it's a guitar <laughs> and play a couple of notes for the VC. I said, this is what it is. So we went and we did what we needed to do. And uh, by the grace of the Most High God, right. I came back. And, uh, now, so. Also, during your time in Vietnam, you shared with me something that I thought was just really interesting. Uh, you discovered something about the impact of soul music on those who were in combat. I think music itself has such a great influence over the human soul. You know, God said music calms a savage beast. And because we all have so much beastly uh, qualities, have so many beastly qualities in us, 
until music really is the only thing that integrated this country. Contrary to what people think about it and say, it was music that brought us together. That's true. And without music, we have fallen apart. <clears throat> and the world has regressed back into stupidity and hatred because music was designed to suppress the anger. You know, you can, I noticed one thing at the concerts, even with the Temps and the Spinners and all the shows that I've been blessed to do, no matter what nationality is sitting next to each other, when the music is playing, mm -hmm. they're just family. Mm -hmm. So that's a great, powerful influence when the only thing left on this planet to get us together is music. But nobody's listening because rap has taken over. But it was designed by the enemy of the people to separate us. And music is the thing that brought us together. So as long as we're together, we can conquer. Divide it, we fail at everything. And so life is sort of like a puzzle. Two pieces, one here and one there. If they never get together, you won't see the picture on it. It's That's just true. two pieces of puzzle. So when people decide to split themselves, then they create an environment that is not livable, that is not approachable by human beings who love the Lord. See, there's a difference in loving the Lord and knowing how to call his name. So they made his name so available until, you know, on this planet you got a God for dogs, you got a God for car thieves, you got a God for <laughs> sex, you got a God for, you name it, and yeah. they'll call God's name on it. That's true. So that's, that's too much accessibility to the one who made you. And if you don't feel him when you call his name, then you're using it in vain. You're not supposed to call God's name like you do Leroy uh, uh, Tyrone. They're not Leroy Tyrone or GC. That's the Lord God. So if you don't feel if when you talk about him, if it don't come up in you, then you, 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 you got a hole in your soul. Okay. So soul music in, in the combat zone where we were was the food that we ate. I listened to, it's ironic, I got to Vietnam and through all the combat, I, got, I was wounded in July, 4th of July, 1967, and I heard Stevie Wonder sing and I was made to love her. Wow. <laughs> and I was laying up in the hospital bed and I sat straight up and it was like, who in the world is that? She was born in that rock. And I lay there for a minute and, uh, and then I heard Just Ask the Lonely, the four times. And those two songs, little did I know within two months I would be home and Stevie would be my best friend. That's what <laughs> yeah. Not bad, wrote, huh? Stevie wrote It's a Shame for the Spinners. So when I came home from Vietnam, September 17th, I got with the Spinners September 30th. And October, I rehearsed. In November, we opened up for Marvin Gaye at the Apollo Theater. Talk about so, a whirlwind. A transition. No, really. Only God. Okay, now, DC, that's got to be a mind-boggling situation. You're going from combat in Vietnam, mm -hmm. being injured, mm -hmm. coming back to the States, mm -hmm.